functions as well as loops are a vital part in any programming language and in this video you will learn more about how to use those functions and loops in R. Please note that this is just an introductory video about those two elements. To learn more about functions and loops I highly recommend that you take a look at the R level 1 course because in this course you will get in-depth knowledge about the different types of functions and loops available within R. So first of all, please be aware that R recognizes functions as objects. So whenever you created a new function, you will see it appearing in the environment. Functions basically do some sort of calculations for you. We have a basic structure when it comes to functions in R. We have the name which we actually give to this function and this name is later on appearing in the global environment over here. Then we have to call the function statement. Then in normal around brackets we are putting the arguments within that function and then we can use the curled brackets to specify the statements within that function. Let's create our first function. We can call it my first fn. Then we can use the assignment arrow. And then we are using the function call. In this function, we just put the element x. And then we are using the curl brackets to specify our statement. In this case, we just want to add x to an already existing x. So let's run this line. And as you can see now, we have my first fn in the global environment over here and now we can actually specify x so that the computer uses this object to conduct a calculation with this number. In this case we are specifying that the computer should conduct the calculation my first fn with a number 10 and if we run this one the output should be 20 and as we can see down here in the console we do get 20. So this was a very basic function. We could also get it a step further. We could use, for example, a stepwise working function. In this part over here, I was specifying my second fn. And this is basically a function of t and z. So I have two variables. Then I'm using the curled brackets. And within the next lines, I am then specifying what to do with this function. So the first part would be to create the object value, which is C times 3. And in the next line, I'm telling the computer that it should use the already created value and do some more calculations with that value. In this case, I'm saying that it should multiply it by T. And this is then our new value. And at last, it should print this value. So let's run those lines. First we are creating the object, then we are doing all those lines. And now I'm specifying t and z. And then I'm putting t and z into my second function. And now the computer actually gives me this output down here. So we have 135 as our output for this function. So this was a bit more complicated of a function, it was a stepwise working function. Let's take a closer look at loops. Whenever you did some programming in some kind of other programming language, you may already know what loops are. So basically loops allow operations to be repeated over and over again. In R we have different types of loops, for example the for and the while loop. Quite often you will see the for loop, this is the most common one, and it allows a certain operation to be repeated a fixed number of times. And this is opposed to, for example, the while loop where the number of repetitions is not that fixed. Let's take a look at the syntax of a typical for loop. So we have to call for, then in round brackets we are specifying the name of our variable within the vector, and then again in the curled brackets we can specify the command which to perform with this variable. So a simple example would be this one down here. Quite often when you see for loops, 
you can see the variable i, but you can basically give this variable any type of name you want as long as this name is not occupied within the R system. In this for loop down here, I'm saying that the computer should print this variable i for every i in the vector 1 to 15. So let's run this one. And now I'm basically getting all the numbers from 1 to 15 in the console. And I would get the very same result if I would use the variable name set instead of i. As you can see down here it is again the numbers from 1 to 50. Please note that this was just a very easy example of a typical for loop. This can be brought to a much more complex level. For example in the level 1 course I'm gonna show you how you can combine functions and for loops to calculate prime numbers according to the Eratosthenes method. In this method you will see functions and if statements and for loops combined to actually give you the prime numbers between 1 and 100. This was just to exemplify that the complexity of functions and for loops within R is nearly unlimited. If you want to get really good with the programming language R, I highly recommend that you get very familiar with functions and loops because they are definitely a vital part within R.